So this is session one of four for Unmasked. This is a teen 1980s superhero setting tinged with some high weirdness uh, from Monty Cook uh, for the, the Cypher system. This one is actually done by Dennis De Detweiler, uh, a longtime uh, uh, sort of a uh, weird superhero uh, designer and also Call of Cthulhu and, and a lot of other things. He's big on the wild talents uh, side of things and has done some very interesting work over there. Um, I think he's the one who wrote Progenitor, which is a really crazy superhero setting uh, that's about building a history more than it is about playing a superhero thing. Um, uh, anyway, we're going to be playing. This is a uh, cypher system, which I'm getting familiar with. I've already done one session of this. Uh, I'm running uh, this as, as well as Gods of the Fall and Predation this month. Uh, so if you are a cypher vet who is watching this, I apologize in advance uh, right now uh, about what you're, you're, you're about to see. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about mechanics here in a second um, when we get going through here. Uh, for those of you watching at home, uh, sometimes I get people watch my videos and they're like, ah, oh, the first half was character creation. So let me warn you right now, the first half is character creation and going through there. So you can skip to the midpoint if you just want to see people roll dice and talk in funny voices, um, just, just as a heads up. Um, so, um, this is part of the gauntlet hangouts, uh, and, uh, this is a set of, of games that are run each month, uh, through the gauntlet hangouts and the gauntlet RPG community. Uh, this is, uh, a game that uses safety tools. So we do have the X card on the table. Uh, I, I've played with everybody here, so I know they're all familiar with the X card just for how we're doing that. It can be this. Uh, or a message in the chat. If we hit things that you find off tone, subject matter you're not cool with, uh, something uh, hits uh, something that really, really bothers you. Um, we're dealing with teenagers here. Uh, so I, I know I did not enjoy my high school years. And so uh, there's a lot of stuff that uh, I might might X card pass myself, uh, but we'll come, come back to that. Um, you may notice Sherry uh, uh, and her camera. She had to switch to a different machine, so so she may be a little little uh, uh, inconsistent here. We'll, we'll see. Not the machine; it's the cat that won't let it stay in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so this is Cipher. Let me talk about the basics of it and how this works on your character sheet. You'll see at the top of each of your columns on your Google sheet um, there that we have uh, essentially a teen uh, area that has your name, what your teenager script is, your pools for your three stats, and then your skills. Uh, all of that is for your teen. Uh, all of you can write in teen skills. Teen skills are things like skateboarding, uh, movie theater ushering, uh, you know, uh, th those kinds of things. They are very light kinds of, of teenager skills. Some of you have uh, uh, skills from your backgrounds, so that is also a possibility. Uh, the basics of this game are, you tell me what you want to do, I set a difficulty and a stat pool. At that point, let's say I said difficulty of three, you can apply things to reduce that difficulty. Skills can reduce a difficulty by one step. And of course, I'm gonna stop screen sharing because it's apparently making my computer insane. Um, screen uh, Skills reduce things by one step. Assets, things that you have, can reduce it by uh, one or two steps. Uh, uh, other abilities can, can do that. Uh, uh, so that will be, let's say, for example, Rich, uh, we had a task that was you trying to figure out whether someone was telling the truth. I might say, well, he's level four, so the difficulty is four. You have the skill discerning truth, so we dump that down to a three. Um, at that point, uh, you have the option to spend effort from your pool, like intellect is your pool there 
spend three points, and it reduces difficulty down by a step. Uh, whatever the final difficulty is, we take that times three, and that's what you need to roll or beat on a roll 20, on essentially on a D20 roll. Uh, the first couple of times, we'll kind of walk through it. Uh, it'll take a little bit to kind of get the, the steps through. Um, your pool provides that effort. You can at most expend one level of effort on something um, uh, because you're, you're essentially your tier one. Um, and that pool is also your hit points. So keep that in mind. So you may notice your teenagers kind of aren't that great because they're teenagers. Um, if you, and then lower down, we have your mask. Your mask identity and stats and everything is completely different from your teen stuff. Um, uh, there is some effects to recovery and damage when you take your, your mask off and return back to your human form, but generally they are two completely different things. Um, your masks, of course, have much higher pools. You will notice that some of you have edge, like uh, I'll take Rich as another example. Rich, you have a edge of two with your might. What that means is when you go to spend effort to like on a might task to, to boost it, uh, it costs you two less. Um, or if you wanted to spend effort to increase your damage, it costs you two less. So it would cost you one point from your might pool instead of two or three. Um, you all have some power shifts for your characters. Those are generally kind of worked in. We'll talk through those. Those are things that affect everything. Um, for example, Rich, one of your power shifts is armor. Uh, another one is anytime you do anything related to, to lifting or strength, we always shift it down a difficulty. Um, and then we also shifted up your punch damage, and that's added in under your punch kick. Um, that's the basics. The other thing is, at points throughout the game, you'll be getting intrusions. When an intrusion happens, essentially uh, I randomly can do a GM hard or soft move, uh, and something will happen. I'll spotlight someone. I'll give them an experience point, and then they can hand the another experience point off to somebody else in the group. Experience points, when you get 10, you get to advance. That may happen in the course of four sessions. But the other thing you can do with experience points is you can spend experience points to give yourself a re-roll. Um, looking at your characters and your powers, um, we'll hit a lot of this is, uh, in play. Is there anything that you're like, I have no idea what, what this is, lol? Not yet. You will. All right, so having having getting those mechanical things in play, and again, this will be a, a little clunky uh, as we, we uh, essentially pump the pedals and uh, uh, get rolling on this. I know Steven has played Cypher before. Sherry, you've played Numenera. Rich, you've played Numenera once or twice, right? I have. Okay. And Michael, what's your experience with Cypher? None. Good. Okay. <laughs> so we, we run the spectrum, run the, the, the gamut here. So let me talk about what we're, what we're actually doing in terms of gameplay today. Uh, this is a game set in the 1980s, mid-1980s. Teenagers that gain weird powers. Uh, we're going to have teen events that kind of spiral into superhero -dom. Um It's a little different than, than Masks, which kind of focuses on the superhero side. Um, but then there's the teen stuff. This, I think, has a lot more of the teen stuff in a sort of Tales from the Loop kind of way. Um, for a couple of reasons that I'll come come back to, but it also has some weirdness. Um, there are some horror tinges in this, um, uh, but I don't know how hard I want to lean into that. I don't know how much you guys would like a sort of a more weird, creepy vibe or more standard supers vibe. What do you? Anybody have strong feelings either way? My character is really geared towards the creepy uh, vibe thing, so I. I would, uh, uh, I guess, for the purpose of the character, would prefer uh, the creepy, uh, the creepy stuff. But um, okay, you know. 
that that it, at least we we demonstrate through your character's strange powers that 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 there is some real oddness to to the powers and the sources here. That seems fair. Um, so here is what has happened to all of you. Uh, all of you have started to see significant objects. Maybe you're walking down the street uh, and you saw a garbage pail kid's card laying in the gutter, but there was a glow around it and you picked it up and you knew it was significant. Um, and over time you saw more and more of these objects and something drove you to bring together the things that you found and actually make a mask out of them. Um, you might have found lots of like Lego pieces and mechanical things and built something like that. Or you might have found like duct tape and, and whatever. You built a mask. Um, and when you put on the mask, the mask has its own personality, its own self, and it interacts with you. You can decide how much it's the mask driving, how much it's you driving, but that mask is there as a personality. And when you put that mask on, you completely transform. So depending on how you want to imagine it, when you put the mask on, you might look like somebody with that mask on, or you might com change completely. You might then suddenly look like Beast from the X-Men um, or something like that. You can decide how much. And at that point, the mask is there, but not as visible. Uh, when you are uh, you know, going around, you will see other people that you know have already put on a mask. You see them, they're called prodigies. You can see that glow. You see, just like you see the glow of those objects called mementos, you know that they're significant. And they, they don't have a rhyme or reason to them. Uh, you might find a pencil that fires out a lightning bolt, um, or you might find a little muscle man figure that uh, when you tear an arm off uh, of it, you teleport. There's, it's, it's weird. Um, and you don't know what's going on. You know that there are these objects around. Um, they are the ciphers of this setting. They're the one-use items of this setting. Um, but they have a kind of animated life of their own. For example, if you gather a whole bunch of those mementos together, it kind of makes things weird in a zone, weird in an area, changes reality a little bit. There are other people out there hunting for these mementos. There are other prodigies out there, both good and bad uh, in your city. And the one thing is, you don't want people to know that you have these masks. You know that if people find out about them, you know, that's going to be bad attention. And the masks themselves don't want uh, uh, to be, you know, recognized or publicly acknowledged or things like that. So there is an amount of secrecy that is going on here with that. Um, any questions about that side of things? I'm going to come to in a bit when we go to characters, I'm going to ask you about how you first found your mask, what it's like. Um, what the process was of building it when I talk about who you are. Um, the assumption is going to be that you four know each other at the start. Um, and maybe you're not necessarily friends, but you are allies in this. And you recognize that each other has these powers and you kind of have to, to work together um, to, to support and aid one another. So... Let me tell you about the city that you're in. I'm going to give a few facts, and then I want to go around and have you add some things in. So this is Wayward, Ohio. It's a, uh, a small uh, Ohio city population, maybe about 75,000. It's got a lake nearby. Um, it's kind of split into north and south. The south side of the city is a little wealthier. Uh, there's the more up-and-coming mall down there. It has one of the two high schools, two big high schools down there. Uh, it has Neil Armstrong High School. Um, and you've got the, the, the Scottsdale Mall down there, 
down there in the south, kind of wealthy area part of town. Northern part of town, a little less wealthy. Um, it's got University Park, which is kind of a, a, a mall that is running down. It's been around a long time and it's kind of falling apart, but people still go there. It's still the mall. Um, the city is kind of split that way. You know, the one big theater, the big cinema up north is a little seedier. The, the movie theater down south, the big multiplex is nicer, newer, all that. All of you go to Ambrose Bierce High School, uh, a famous Ohioan um, and writer. Um, there's still kind of a downtown that splits the city uh, uh, in the middle. Uh, they still got shops and stores down there. I imagine, you know, there are, uh, you know, businesses and, and maybe even a comic book store downtown. Um, there's a couple of, of local small colleges. And the big uh, uh, industry that has kind of propped up your city is the company of Funshine Toys. Funshine Toys, they are the biggest purveyor of knockoff toys. They don't make G.I. Joes. They make Soldier Man. Uh, you know, they don't make Masters of the Universe. They make uh, Muscle Heroes. Um, they both manufacture these knockoffs and also uh, import them and distribute them from this. It's a big factory, big complex. It's uh, 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 it's often served with uh, legal notices and cease and desist orders. So sometimes when a particular line uh, gets too close to somebody else's thing, then the company will have to dump uh, a great vast uh, hordes of action figures. So sometimes you find them wash up in the river. Um, sometimes they're just dumped into uh, the junk stores in town. Uh, so there's all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they have like Norf. They had that for a while and they got sued for that, uh, especially because the foam was a little harder than a Nerf uh, and it caused some injuries. Um, so that's the big thing about Wayward, Ohio, the big industry. Those are my details. Sherry, tell me something else about Wayward, Ohio. Um, let's see here. I think that the other thing that's kind of interesting about Wayward, Ohio is that it has... Um, sort of two TV stations. Uh, it doesn't have the third network, but it um, has the two TV stations. They're also sort of uh, north and south. And there's sort of a real rivalry um, between them uh, where um, like that one that's down south, it, w it built itself down south before south got richer in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. So they have like, um, but now they're on the ascendance, they're NBC and this okay. is like their time and they crow. Uh, and it's, it's, um, yeah. And it's essentially, but the local news teams, there's like the big favors. They're just as regional. So the, the South people like the South, but the NBC local newscasters and the North people like. So. Uh, is North CBS or ABC? Uh, what what one is the oldest one? I think it's CBS, right? Okay, That's yeah. the one that has the older demographics. So yeah, it would be CBS and NBC. There's probably, uh, if you have uh, the right antenna, you could probably pick up the Fox slash ABC affiliate from the next city over. Mm -hmm. um, but it comes in real, real bad uh, if you don't have cable. Um, I have to get the antenna uh, hooked up and rigged for that. Okay, I like that. Michael, what's another thing about Wayward? Ohio. Uh, there's a local televangelist who's uh, getting popular, um, who's got like, maybe like a regional, regionally prominent. And uh, he's got a um, kind of a proto megachurch in town. Ah, proto megachurch. Do you have a name? Uh, let's see. Let's call him Ian Waldor. Ian Waldor. And Ian Waldor has a Waldor Hour of Power uh, yes. uh, every day that comes on. Uh, he's probably got a little low-powered broadcast station. Uh, uh, they're showing like a reruns of Andy Griffith and uh, the Lone Ranger and stuff, uh, uh, you know, to cover the other broadcast hours. And otherwise, they've got that sort of uh, franchise Christian programming uh, yeah. from around there. 
And he'd be based in the, the south side of town. Ah, obviously, the Vega Church built that up there. Nice. Rich, tell me something else about Wayward, Ohio. Wayward has a new-ish um, skate park that was funded by some local Wayward, uh, I, th I think like a Wayward organization that got together. We're going to do something to keep kids off the streets. We've heard the drugs is really bad. And so this is their attempt. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not going to last. It's not going to last. Um, did they do like a hip car, a hip commercial, hip local commercial with lots radio of commercials, with yeah. radio commercials? Like, a, Hey kids, uh, 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 you know, and they hear the, the little, little tag user tag. What's the name of the skate park? Oh God. That's a great question. Um, 720. <laughs> Just 720. 720 because that's that's good enough. Skate or <laughs> die. And uh it's extreme, uh, of course. Uh uh and uh, uh it, it they've built it up. I imagine that that by accident some of the skate park actually is pretty pretty nice. Um uh and then there's a lot of the, the sort of baby areas uh of it. Does it have a fence around it? Uh it it, it does, but there's a there's you know, there's always a way to get in. Always a way to get in. Okay. Awesome. Steven, tell me something about Wayward, Ohio. Yeah. Um, the south side where the poor people live only has like... Uh, that's the wealthy. So yeah, south no, is wealthy. Okay. I'm sorry. The north side where the poor people live only have one or two video arcades. Right. And they're kind of run down. They still have mostly pinball machines and, you know, a few older video game machines like in the back. But if you cross the river on your bike, you can find like they have like a uh, like Walker Bridge. that You're not supposed to take your bike on, but we do anyway. And on the south side where all the rich people live, there's a lot of money to be made. And there's some really nice arcades, you know, like uh like the uh, Dave and Buster's kind of things that are okay. there that there's kind of turf wars, you know, the rich kids on the other side of the tracks, you know, fight with the poor kids from the uh, North side. And they're like, Oh no, this is my place. Get out of here. So, yeah. So those are, those are gathering points. Uh, we got the Dave and Buster's and the, the Aladdin's castle. Uh, that's down there uh, uh, in the south. You know, they've got all their specialized tokens and deals and things. Up north, it's arcade land. Um, and one that's of them like, is, yeah, uh, uh, one of them is stuck in the mall, uh, sort of at the back end uh, next to like a candy uh, popcorn shop. Um, and uh, the other one is uh, uh, a freestanding place that clearly is on its last legs. Um Neither place has had their carpets cleaned in how many years? You don't know. Lots of gum. Lots of that kind of thing. Um, uh, and you do know that, of course, it, those machines uh, are easy to put slugs in um, uh, rather than the, the other ones have a little more sophisticated. All right. So I know something more about Wayward. Is Wayward where these strange things have started to appear. These strange mementos have started to, to, to crop up. Uh, there have been rumors about different weirdnesses. What I want to do now is uh, look and have each of you introduce your character. And I want to ask some leading questions about that. Um, get that out on the table. Um, and then I want to establish some relationship stuff. Um, so uh, I'm going to follow that same order uh, that I, I just did. And we're going to start with you, Sherry. Okay. Uh, tell us about your teen and your mask. Okay, so my teen's name is Darlene Sabo. Uh, she's a creative uh, teen. Uh, she's skilled at puzzle solving, learning new things. She's very bad at pleasant social interactions, which is perfect because this is the era of ew, gross me out with a cow and all of that. So that is pretty much all young girls at that age. Um, we were all terrible and um and her extra special name it herself skill is collage uh essentially she doesn't draw particularly well 
Um, she doesn't do any particular artistic endeavor particularly well, but she can take a lot of pieces and put them together and make something super striking. Um, people like that. Uh, let's see, her mask, um, its name is Babylon Pie. It's a new wave changer that wants to be adored. Um, when you see it, uh, every ma um, outfit or however she appears, it will always be sort of black and white, very stark with a splash of color because of course all of the sort of design elements that were big then were very amateur. Um, so black and white with a splash of color is the easiest thing to get a striking effect with. So very much that. Um, uh, it, it usually stripes, usually stripes, sometimes not, but mostly stripes. Um, the other thing that I look at is that um, when she wears the mask, she starts out and it's very high resolution, you know, dark blacks, white, um, bright whites, and whatever the splash of color is, is very clear. But as she and the mask run down, it starts to look more and more like it's been photocopied a hundred times. Um, and so she's good with uh, sonic blast and that and she can produce sounds and she has withering social effects so i hope that's useful um how big is the physical difference between your teen self and uh the the babylon pie self well that's variable so essentially, if the spotlight's on Babylon Pie, Babylon Pie is very tall and very statuesque and very striking. Um, when not, just regular human being size, maybe a little bit taller than Darlene because she hasn't reached her full height yet. Um, and Darlene, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, in the email, uh, works at Orange Julius. She works at Orange Julius. Her life at work is sticky. And she's forced to wear this horrible headscarf that's like like from the 1950s kind of thing. It's a triangle with a little cord on it. And you tie your hair back in it. It's, it's a fashion atrocity because it's in pastels. Oof. Oof. The worst. Um, t tell me about how you found the mask. What was that process like or how did you make the mask? What does that look like? Well, essentially for her, her time, whenever she has it and her money, as much as she has, goes to buying music. And so I see that as that's her finding sale, you know, finding items in those bins. Sometimes like, you know, finding a, a mixtape for a group that she's never heard of and no one else has ever heard of and or not a mixtape, a, a tape. And then when she buys it, it breaks immediately in this this you know the tape from inside spooled out and it's the thing that has the glow on it or um found a pair of i don't know elvis costello style glasses like dropped you know behind one of the places just just weird little bits found a movie or i mean excuse me show posters you know the little like multi-xerox ones for a show that wasn't taking place in Wayward, you know, and, but that had the glow on it. And just all of those pieces kind of coming together, pieces of uh, CDs, which are the new thing, uh, a broken CD that had, you know, that. Um, so around the record store, I think. Okay. And I assume you kind of collage, put it together with like decoupage and, and stuff to, exactly. to make the mask. Okay. Um What's your family like? Well, my dad's an accountant at Funshine. Um, and his mood is entirely based on how much the next lawsuit is costing the company. Um, so, and where his, um, he has never been laid off. My mom, who works there sometimes too, has been because she works on the line. Um, we have money, but my parents are always saving, saving, saving. So it's, they keep on both working and putting it all away. Um, and I mean, some of it is supposedly for Darlene when she goes to, to college, but to her, it just seems like it's a constant slog. They never do anything fun. They never go anywhere. Who is someone in your life that you would consider an anchor 
taking this sort of from tales of the loop someone that you go to for uh, emotional support or 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 strength of mind is it a teacher is it uh, you know a coworker is it a family member um i think it's my grandmother um who i go to visit with um she still speaks hungarian and she doesn't speak English very well, and I don't speak Hungarian. So pretty much she makes me food, and she makes sympathetic uh, sounds, and we get along because she doesn't understand me, and I don't really understand her. Okay. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll come back to you in a bit. All right. Uh, Michael, uh, mm -hmm. tell us about your teen <clears throat> and your mask identity. Sure. So I will be playing Anthony Rivas. He is lawful by nature. Is there any kind of age uh, ideas about what you have for these characters? Do they have? A, are they on the same class, for example? Or uh, I imagine you guys should probably be like like sophomores or juniors. Okay, sounds good. And he is um, was raised in a, uh, a evangelical Christian background. Um, when I was coming up with this character, I was trying to think of uh, like what I remembered from the '80s, and I have distinct memories of uh, as a as a a young as a young teen in the '80s. I I remember being really hooked on um, the evangelical shows, the ones that would focus on all the apocalypse stuff, you know, all mm -hmm. the revelations, um, prophecy. I, I I've, and I think that was like kind of fed into uh, me getting into D and D at the same time, you know, because. You know, maybe in uh, maybe in church talk, but it was also demons and beasts in the sky and all that. So I was like super into that stuff. Um, and I think that that's kind of how this character is. I figure I, I'm thinking one of his parents works at the uh, <clears throat> the Wal Waldor Ministry um, Ministries, perhaps as a let's see, they're not quite at a TV level yet, but maybe a radio technician, let's say, um, broadcasting, helping to broadcast the word. Uh, and his uh, his mask is named Abraxas, which is the name of a kind of like a, a demon slash mystical entity. And I I was thinking that he may have fashioned the mask out of a uh, out of one of the discarded uh, fun fun hap fun haver. What was the name of the company uh, again? Funshine. Funshine. Um, I, I was thinking maybe it was a uh, maybe a knockoff of uh, a Slimer mask from Ghostbusters, but a little more demonic looking. Okay, dark red instead of bright green. Uh, that was discarded for uh, for copyright uh, to avoid a copyright uh, a lawsuit and to avoid bankrupting uh, uh, Darlene's father. <laughs> um, and I think I would have fashioned that and probably would have. Uh, you know, the, over the course of making that mask, it probably would have involved like rating the demon's name on the forehead, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, since then given him uh, various speak to the dead abilities. Uh, and so let, let's 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 talk about that. So we, mm -hmm. your character has some interesting sort of sorceress kind of uh, necromantic stuff. Um, yes. So uh, you can speak to the dead. Um, uh, uh, you've got that uh, entangling force, which is kind of a, a spell thing. What do you imagine that looks like? Uh, ectoplasm, <laughs> just like okay. uh, just like a Ghostbuster style. Something he vomits out of the mask, maybe. Okay. Um, tell me, uh, what is what, and when you're in this Abraxas form? What do you look like? Uh, I figure there's going to be a good amount of physical transformation because uh, this mask identity is pretty different from his uh, mortal identity. So I'm, I'm let's see, let's envision. Uh, let's see, we already have someone who looks like we already have someone who gets uh, big and bulky. I think this will be uh, more like a lot. I, I, I envision that he get he probably gets surrounded by, uh, let's say, like a. A lot of red mist and you know his skin probably takes on a reddish form he probably looks kind of like a more wraithly than super demon monstery okay uh there's an interesting you've got a a a a, a, a real sort of uh dichotomy between your teen self and your mask self how how does uh 
uh, uh, Anthony get along with the, the mask identity? Uh, is there any tension or is it there? Is this just super cool? Uh, I think since he's not about, since I see he has an inability to break the law. So I think there, there's got, still got to be some lingering tension in that the corruption hasn't fully taken hold yet. Uh, you know, the inevitable corruption. Mm -hmm. he's, he still tries to be, you know, live within the bounds of society as he was raised to. Uh, but he may, he may, I think he's going to take a tact where he thinks as long as his intentions are pure, then he has God on his side and maybe God's using him to, these parts could be God working through him to command the demons, just like, uh, Jesus exercised the, uh, you know, the evil spirits from the people and drove them into the sheep or, or whatever the story was. I, it's been a while since I've heard it, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's his tact. He's, um, he's still, he, I'm sure he still experiences a lot of uh, angst because he's afraid of the, you know, that, that inevitable corruption that the sort of thing has. I'm, I'm sure his parents would think he was just maybe being deceived by the devil or something. And sometimes he wonders if that's the case. Uh, but yeah, uh, so he, he'll, you know, there will be some, I think there will be some angst, but not so much that it, you know, cripples him from participating in the game, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, let me ask a similar question. I asked Sherry about this anchor. Mm -hmm. Who is the person that is your emotional support that you, you go and talk to? Yeah. So, hmm. I'm going to say that there is a friend that he knows through the church. And they secretly play Dungeons and Dragons without their parents, you know, without their, you know, without their parents knowing. And just like in Stranger Things, that may be his uh, between that and the Bible. The Bible and the Monster Manual are basically what guides his not his like, you know, half-assed knowledge of the occult. Okay, uh, uh, we'll give uh, a name to that character. We'll call him uh, uh, Brad DaCosta. I, I I remember my, both my sister and I had friends who were very much that was that was the thing that they couldn't tell uh, their parents that they were going out to to play D and D. So there were all sorts of cover stories that were concocted over time. <laughs> all right, thank you very much, uh, Rich. Tell us about your character. Character I'm playing is named Sean Jefferson, but he prefers to go by his nickname of Dig Dug. He calls himself Dig Dug because that's his best game. Uh, there are a lot of games he's good at, uh, but the Dig Dug up in North Side, it to takes a slug. He's got a slug on a rope, uh, hey. so he can play that. Although he realized, hey, even if they take the slug, if I'm good enough, then I can just keep playing. Uh, so that's what he is. He's good enough to just keep playing. Um, and that's where he spends, has spent the majority of his time. Uh, Dig Dug, re he really wants to go to the arcade. And uh, things are starting to change now with um, Bulldog, his mask. But before then, it was just go to the arcade, spend all day at the arcade, ride his bike to the arcade, and just be at the arcade uh, because he didn't want to be at home. He didn't want to be a burden. Um, because his, his family, his dad works sometimes. He's kind of a day labor type guy, catch as catch can. Really tough for him to hold down a job. Because um, there's you know there's a little bit of racism in in Wayward mm -hmm. and Ohio Midwest, yeah, yeah. And, and so you know Sean just kind of avoids that by by diving into video games, and, and he knows it's there. It's on the periphery, but if he can just keep playing and he's good and he's really good. He doesn't cause any trouble. Then it'll be okay. Um, siblings. Yeah. A bunch. Oh, okay. Bunch of siblings. That's a whole nother reason. Like, you know, if he can just play dig dug for a few quarters, you know, and, and then maybe just scrounge some food around, then he won't be a burden to anybody at home. Do you imagine that they're, they're elder, middle, younger? Kind of older, middle, enough to to where he's seen his 
older siblings go on and not get jobs, but move out. Uh, I think a couple are in prison. All right. Tell us about Bulldog then. So Bulldog is his mask. And Bulldog was created from just... He, he cut out a mask out of some old uh, like standees from the the arcade and just fashioned his own little it was I don't know he just thought it would be kind of fun and he kept adding on and and but again and I think that even though he calls himself Dig Dog that it's really like a like a Marvel Supers beat em up you know coin eater mm-hmm. type game that he got most of the the collage that he made of his own it's not as good as other people's collages, but he heard it. It's not a Darlene level collage, but he likes it anyway. Okay, uh, piece that together. Fa- saw some of these standees that had the significance, and and piece that uh, together. Um, yeah, and then the piece de resistance is uh, it's like a big dog collar that he he found in a dumpster. And dumpster diving. He was not looking for food. No, he was not looking for food. It's just dumpster diving for fun. And uh, what do you look like when you put on the mask and become Bulldog? Completely different. Um, He's still black, but he's just gigantic. Uh, Like seven feet tall. This crazy mohawk. Um, Pronounced canines like... He wouldn't know, but like an orc from D and D, kind of. Uh, but they're they're like tusks, mm-hmm. like canine type deals. He's just huge and beefy, and his his powers are very kind of golem like because uh, he's a smasher who abides in stone. So I think that he, even though say on the comic page he looks like just a really large dude, that this is actually a kind of stone. So there's like a grating of stone on stone when he moves around. He does not sneak up on anybody. <laughs> that seems, that seems fair uh, to me. And you've got your, your stuff is pretty straightforward. I think. I think uh, so too. I don't think there's anything tricky. It's like overcoming fear, punching. He's fast. He's big. And his mask is just his best friend. Cause his anchor is his mask. His mask is his anchor and his anchor is just an escape Mm -hmm. uh, and an empowerment and a total wish fulfillment that allows him to ignore all the rest of his life His hand me down Adidas shoes, his shirt that hasn't been washed in a few weeks, his hoodie that has far too many holes in it. All of that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all awesome uh there is you probably already caught that there's a cut and paste error on your uh powers uh that stink eye power is actually uh uh that name is wrong but everything else is right underneath it oh um... it's at that's the where did that come from is actually the name of the power there because i i I oh i see okay cool yeah Yeah. problem just tell you what that is um, and that's actually kind of a cool power, I, I think. Oh, fixing it. Thank you. All right. Um, so, uh, let me think here what I ask here. Um, uh, has he gone to the South Side arcades? Oh yeah, there was a there was a there was a big like a whole uh, contest, like a tournament, you know, like they, they even said the Starcade was going to show up. They didn't show up, but they said the Starcade was going to have <laughs> auditions and stuff. And was that a good time or not a good time? It was really good until Dig Dug won. And then these kids came around and they started a fight and he did not want a bulldog on them. So, he left, you know, like, he, if he fought back, he would have totally taken him down. Totally. Totally. 
Uh, did he actually get a prize from that? Uh, he doesn't have it, but he did win one. Yeah. Oof. Uh, you're killing me, dude. <laughs> cool little like trophy, like an arcade machine, like a coin op, stand up like to the side. It's plastic, but it looks good. I, I mean, I, I would imagine it looks good. Awesome. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you. Uh, Steven, tell us about your character. Uh, Eric Pinkard is a metalhead teen. Um, and his dad is basically, he owns like a mechanic shop. So Eric um, is probably 14 or 15, like a sophomore. Um, and is totally into like heavy metal hair band music. Um, and uh, so anyway, they, uh, he, he spends his afternoons after school um, working for his dad there in the shop. And, you know, trying to fix up old bikes, old, you know, old uh, motorcycles, old, you know, cars, clunkers that come in. Um, he definitely lives definitely lives on the north side. That's where the shop is. So this is just trying to get the automobiles enough to piece together. So, like Eric's dream is to be in a metal band, right? He that's just the thing he wants to do. So what his mask is is his mask is basically old bits of like electrical tape and stickers and receipts that he's kind of collaged together to form like a kiss mask. So like the demon wings kind of thing. And um, whenever he puts it on, I don't know if you've seen the old 80s like kiss movies, right? But like being shoot out of his eyes and stuff like that. Um, his mask form is Warlock. And Warlock um, sometimes, so what happens is sometimes Warlock will come back They'll be so he appears sort of like uh, one of those kiss power guys, but sometimes Warlock comes back from the future. Um, Warlock is a lucky thinker who comes from the future. So sometimes this like old tattooed dude um, that looks like Spider Jerusalem from the comics, he's got tattoos all over everywhere and he's bald and that kind of stuff comes back and will do a couple of things to help out, you know, Warlock. But like that dude. I talked to him a little bit. He's like not in a band. He's like a groupie and works at a copy shop someplace. And he says, you know, he says, kids, you know, you're going to have some problems, you know, but stick with it. Keep your dreams. But, you know, your dreams are going to fail because you're going to end up working minimum wage someplace. <laughs> so I don't think that guy lies to me. He says that that's the future, but it's not really the future. You know, I'm going to be in a band. And uh, besides uh, the, the future selves that pop up to aid you, which is a, a great power, um, uh, what are the other powers that you have? Um, I have Onslaught. Uh, Onslaught is uh, shooting things. And I think this is my eye beam kind of stuff okay. out of the mask. Um, far step is I jump and I leap pretty far um, to appear long range within somewhere else. Scramble a machine, which is I can... Uh, mess up a machine, shatters, I can scream, and it will break an object in the area, that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, what was uh, it like when you first found the mask and first put it on? Um, so basically, you know, as I said, I kind of created the, this collage, and I thought, this is what I'm going to wear at, like, the Battle of the Bands. This is what I'm going to wear... Because it's more important to look cool than it is to be able to play it, play an instrument, right? So I was like, I'm going to put this on and I'm going to be awesome. And I put it on, it was just rock and roll. It was like, I'm bigger than life. And it wasn't just whenever I put this on, you know, I'm kind of a scrawny teen who, you know, it's always a little bit greasy, that kind of stuff. I put this on and I'm just shiny and I'm ready to go up and, you know, see the big lights and I've got just the best manicured hair it's just gorgeous so it transforms what i look like mm -hmm. but it kind of makes me into a showbiz version of myself so a uh, question that i have then is what's the personality of the mask like we know we've got this person that that comes from the future but what's the mask itself personality yeah so i think the mask itself's personality is uh uh, almost bravado it's you know 
you're the best. You can do everything now. So it's sort of, it's almost like a drug. It's almost like, you know, encouraging you to go beyond what you think you can do. Awesome. Awesome. I, 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 I love that. And who is your anchor? Um, I think my anchor is, it's not, I wouldn't necessarily say it's an anchor, but it's uh, someone who I idolize. And it's uh, this guy, he's the drummer who was in a band who won Battle of the Bands last year. So he actually, you know, I got to talk to him and he told me this is how you get your band going and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I hope one day maybe to join his band and be like the lead singer or the lead guitarist on his band. Um, but I wouldn't say that he necessarily gives me good advice mm -hmm. or is someone to look up to, but he's someone that, you know, I idolize. He can do no wrong. Let me uh, ask you say, one more question. Okay, go on. His name no. is Bobby. Um, Jonas. Yeah. Bobby Jonas. Awesome. So, so some interaction idolizing there. Um, they ask you to give me the name of uh, an NPC that you have a, a relationship, either positive or negative, conflicting, whatever. Someone that's a peer, for me, probably from the high school or you know from another high school and stuff. Give give me a give me who they are and what that relationship is. Yeah. So I think that um, there's another. Uh, teen. So uh, I think I tried out for the football team, but I didn't make it. And I, okay. I really couldn't afford to um, be on the football team because I have to work in the, you know, after school. My dad was pissed whenever he found out. But okay. th there are a few kids who did make it on the football team. Um, and one of them picks on me and like, you know, will beat me up, give me a bloody nose, that kind of stuff. I'll come in with a black eye from time to time. Um, and his name is Jeremy. And basically, he's just he's showing dominance. You know, he's like, oh, you're a little punk. You think you're so good. You look so pretty. I'm going to black that eye. OK, uh, and I'm going to come back. I'm going to touch on that again uh, in, a, in a bit. But I want to want to hold that rich. Who's an NPC that uh, you have uh, a relationship appear, either positive or negative? I, I think there's uh, there's another classmate that he has a relationship with. Maybe his name is um, Luis. Uh, let's see. Make sure I'm not overstepping any names. So we got. Yeah, I think we're good. So his name's Luis, and uh, they, they're friendly. They talk video game stuff. Luis actually has a subscription to Nintendo Power. And a Nintendo, wow! Uh, so that's pretty great. And he's invited Sean over. Sean hasn't gone. Dig, dig there, ducks at the arcades. Uh, is there a third person that kind of makes that relationship more complicated? Uh, a parent or another peer or something like that? Um, yeah, I, th I think maybe he, uh, Luis, has an older brother who is good buddies with that little group of preps who. Took Dig Duck's trophy, mm. and and Luis doesn't know, and and Sean's not going to tell him. Nice, nice, uh, Michael, an NPC. Let's see. I'm thinking, uh, Rich. You mentioned that uh, that lame skating skate park was uh, established by some organization. Could it have been Waldorf Ministries? I think that'd be awesome. Cool. In that case, let's say that my NPC will be the man, um, Larissa Martin. And she's like the, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Ian Waldor's, uh, I guess, director of youth outreach. So that's her big, uh, big project. So, so somebody who's maybe like a, 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 an older teen who's gotten hired into this position? Yeah, someone's fresh out of college, let's say. Okay. And what's your relationship with her? Uh oh, that's right. Um that's a good question. Can we what was the name of uh the 
what was the name that you gave my best friend uh who uh uh brad da costa let's make her Larissa. Ooh, Larissa da costa um let's make yeah why not let's uh okay. let's make her the Larissa da costa and say she's the mom of my best friend uh sister oh right because she's young yes yeah. even even better yes sister of brad why is that relationship a little complicated for you uh probably because of a you have a crush on, on larissa <laughs> yeah that's the first thing that came to mind so you know, let's roll with it okay and of course you can never tell that to brad you know mm -hmm. and she comes around and she's come back from college and she's she's so cool and she runs a skate park it's the yeah. oh my god i keep asking bulldog for uh for uh, skating tip for boarding tips yes <laughs> so you can get better at that awesome uh sherry uh, what is a, uh, who is a, uh, NPC for Darlene? Okay. So in middle school, my best friend was Lisa Darnell. And then like, uh, I don't know, everything changed cause it was middle school and it got really confusing. And all of a sudden, uh, Lisa wasn't my best friend anymore. And she, in fact, we kind of hate each other, except that we know everything about each other. It's the worst. And um, she's the only other person who's as good at mixtapes and collages as I am. And so we have a low level Cold War of um, essentially collage buildup, where essentially we. Um, we work to get our stuff displayed and to get the most uh, ooh points and people liking, the, you know, who likes what best. The big thing is this year it's mixtapes. We're competing on who's making the best mixtapes. And who's a third person who complicates that, that cold war. Is there a friend they want to press it or it's a boy. Yeah, I think, I think there's a guy, he's my lab partner in chemistry and we get along fine because my um, charting and stuff is meticulous and everything. And he always wants to look at my homework. So he's always kind of hanging around me. And Lisa has super crush on him and thinks that, that I'm like trying to move on him. What's his name? Uh, his name is, uh, let's see. Well, Let's see. It's that era, so everyone's named Dave at that point. So okay. it's like, yeah, he's his name is Dave Ellis. All right, thank you. Um, and with that in mind, I've, I've done the sort of the triangle there. Let me come back to you with that Jeremy question, Stephen. Who's the third person who complicates that relationship between you and this kind of bully character? Um, I think that. Uh, there's another guy on the football team that stands up and tells Jeremy, you know, stop. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be beaten up on other kids. It's just not right. Um, kind of stands up for me. Okay. He steps in from time to time. What's his name? Um, do we have a Brad yet? Uh, I think we have a Brad. Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, John. Do we have a John. That don't have a John. Let's do a John. John. Okay. Um, Brightwig. Okay. So, you each found your mask, each discovered powers, came to that, um, and there was an incident, and you four got caught up in this incident. And that's how you sort of first met this is our when the team first came together bit that I'm sealing from masks. Um, Sherry, uh, uh, when the four of you came and you all had your masks on, you defeated a dangerous enemy. Who or what was it? Okay. Um, I got to say that it was was like this weird sort of uh, mecha centaur uh, prodigy um so like really weird made out of like um like brass and what were they doing um wow that's good um 
Because what would bother her? Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, I, gosh. I think that what they had done is uh, like robbed someplace, but when they were escaping, they um, they caused a big car accident, um, like a whole bunch of car accidents, because essentially, um, and it, it isn't like anyone can go, oh, there was this big center, or do people see the see the pro see the prodigies oh they do in their form they do okay yeah. yeah there was a there was a big like sort of car accident and everything because at first people thought they were seeing horse running across the highway and then it was a person and then it was like people getting out and then other cars ramming in. it was just very very bad so let's say that that was like what drew our attention i like that um michael uh in the course of this conflict with this mecha centaur um, of course, I'm picturing the Micronauts, uh, Baron Karza set up. If, if anyone remembers that, it might be a deep cut. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 something, something got destroyed. Some, some, some site or some part of your surroundings got smashed up. What, what was it, and uh, uh, how did that happen? Uh, let's say it was. Uh... I think it was a uh, maybe a an apartment complex that used to be that used to be where the skate park is now. Okay. And let's say uh, it was a let's see. Just looking over at the character sheets. Uh, Maybe, uh, maybe uh, Warlock tried to seize control of uh, the Mecha Centaur's uh, abilities, and in the course of trying to subvert the, its security systems, it went haywire and just. Um, oh, now leveling the apartment complex that could that that kind of implies like a whole bunch of uh, mass casualties. Is that something we want to get into as, as being part of our background? Well, we can say that it certainly uh, uh, damaged and knocked some things. We can say that there were people injured, but... Uh... Yeah, maybe it didn't destroy it enough, but it did wreck it just, just enough. It didn't destroy it completely, but maybe it wrecked it just enough where it was no longer habitable. Okay. And everyone had to move out. And yeah, who knows? Maybe that's kind of an ongoing issue. All these people who uh, need housing and you know, where, where do they end up? Uh, especially since uh, the land that it was, um, the land is now this skate park where, you know, maybe, you know, people go to skate. Okay. So, so I, I like it because one of the things that uh, uh, implies is that you guys have had these masks and had these powers for a while. Um, uh, so that, that, the you know, they, they took advantage to, to build the skate park um, and uh, set things up. Um, now, is that okay with, uh, if I may ask, is that okay, Stephen, is that okay with you that uh, I, I just realized I just kind of uh, proposed your character being part of the, part of that issue. Is that a thing that's okay? Uh, let me ask you this, uh, Sean. Um, you, uh, you uh, stuck together. Uh, uh, you have uh, you know, at least exchange and, and you know who each other are and you've stuck together afterwards. Um, why and, you know, what's the means that you guys use to kind of stay in contact or the, the, the channels that you use? Uh, well, you can always find me at the arcade. So there you go. Is that the arcade, is that good? Are we okay yeah. with that? And what 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 for you is the reason why the, the the four of you decided to like share and kind of stick together and and you know kind of be a team? Well, it just that's how it goes. Like superheroes got a team together. 
Darlene's cute. So, so it's less a purposeful uh, uh, joining of minds and more of a, well, I guess we're a team now. That's the Sean's read on it. Okay. Uh, I like that. Um, I, I kind of imagine that like Anthony is all about like buddying us up and this is a thing that he's baby driven because he seems very organized and actually cares a lot. Am I wrong about that? About no, Anthony? That seemed good for you, Anthony. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, let's roll with that. I am the changer. I'm about building relationships, although it seems like I'm more about building relationships with dead people, but <laughs> I could work for the team as well. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm always trying to get people into our, our D&D game. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. Um, let me ask you, Stephen, uh, when this all went down, the cyber uh, uh, centaur and, and you, the four of you got together, uh, uh, if you kind of found out the, the real identities, all of that, um, during that battle, you drew attention Um people don't know exactly what happened. There's all these stories about it, but they don't know the specifics. Um, but you, one important per person in particular in the city is, uh, 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 has drawn their ire. They, they know that there's something weird going on out there and they, they're, they're talking about it and they, they maybe are kind of pursuing you guys. Who is that? Um, so someone's parents works for the religious or organization is that right is that you darlene uh anthony that's me that's anthony that's okay and um so i if you don't mind how about if basically they saw some of this go down they saw these people come out these superheroes come out and i think they're going to start preaching against these are maybe demons of the devil or these are bad people yeah. sure especially with the Braxis, who actually is a demon in their yeah theology so no one quite believes them, but they've they've told the story. And so uh, uh, Pastor, is it Waldor? Waldor. Um, Pastor Waldor has has spoken on the radio show about about these kinds of things. And maybe it sounds a little crazy conspiracy, but uh, uh, he's railing. And, and uh, certainly members of that church, you know, they're not certain, but people know that there's strange things going on in town. They recognize that there's some some weirdness there. Um, so that seems like a good set of relationships. We've got the the city kind of set. Um, we've got some some people uh, uh, to throw in there. I want to take our five minute break, uh, and when we come back, I'm going to put you in school. Sound good? Okay.
Rich, you have an international awesome today, don't you? I do. Okay. It starts at 115, so as long as we okay. stop on time, I'm good. I just can't run over. Yeah, yeah I, I've been stopping at a quarter till just to, to make oh, that awesome. happen. A half hour to eat. That'd be yep. dope. I love the uh, text that you got there for, for Dick Doug. Thank you. That is literally taken from Dig Dug. <laughs> so oh, <that's> great. <laughs> yeah, I have to play with the overlays. I mean, look at this. It's it is never sticking. You've never had this before. Yeah, it's amazing. I, it makes me pleased as punch. You guys, this is the best. Added more functionality. That that Presets. seems like they're going to allow us to save stuff again. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if this is a uh, like like they're they're gonna be doing more with this maybe hopefully I don't know like I want to send five bucks to Moritz Toxador for Toyx store for just making it happen they're getting <laughs> back out I did not realize how much I missed it until it was gone I'm gonna ask one more personal question before I I, I throw you into school. Um, let me start with you, Rich. Um, uh, you have a guarded character. That's your that's your descriptor. Mm -hmm. uh, of the other three, uh, who has kind of been able to get past your defenses and maybe befriend you, like actually make you a real friend? I think it's Eric. He's just so showy and. Don't tell him I said this, but kind of dorky that it it, it cracks me up, and and I'll, I'll just open up and talk about stuff with him. And uh, uh, do, do you have musical tastes? Yeah, yeah. It's not metal. Okay, I figured this is this is the 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 nation era of uh strong good uh hip hop and rap so there's some good good stuff i've got i mean i've got like seven singles of some dope like mc light kid and play salt and pepper mm. some good stuff it's an, an awesome time um anthony uh, you're kind of lawful, uh, you know. You're law abiding, and uh, uh, but but you want to do this. Which of the other three? Who do you actually trust? Mm -mm. That's a good question. Uh... Maybe, maybe Warlock. Just, just from default. Well, hmm. Yeah, who? I'm trying to think of who would be the. Uh, actually, maybe not Warlock. Uh, Warlock's a metalhead. Rich is the Garden Teen. You know, I bet. I, I bet. Let's let's say uh, um, Bulldog. Okay, uh, so you do trust to trust Sean. Um, it kind of uh, uh, makes makes sense to you. Uh, yeah. Given that one's a, uh, well, hmm. Let's see. As long as you don't know about the slugs, you might might think that uh, Sean is the most law abiding. Right. I, I, I'm. I'm trying to think of who I'd have the. Um, the better rapport with. Uh, I see Darlene is, is incapable in pleasant social interactions, so I think that would rule her out. Uh, no, nothing personal. <laughs> well, nothing personal to the player, everything personal for the character. Um, but here, here's my thinking. I guess either... I, I, I could see Anthony bonding with Sean, with, with Sean over... You know, hang, <laughs> hang out. He'd probably be hanging out at the 
Yeah, now that I think about it, yeah, that, let's let's go to Sean because he's probably always trying to hang out at the uh, at the skate park anyway because uh, because his uh, his his love is runs the place. Um, yeah, we'll we'll stick with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Darlene, uh, which of these three did you have a uh, an actual friendship or relationship before all this went down? See, here's the thing: is it's like I said, she's all about the music. And only one of the three of them that actually spent any time at that record store that she went to is Eric. And mind you, he was in other sections, but we still would be there, you know, hanging around, talking the ear off of the poor clerk, you know, um, asking about things. Um, he wanted imports too, but of course everything would be too expensive. It was a lot of us going, well, how much would this cost? And going, oh. and so, <laughs> And, and they have so, to look it up in a book. There's no exactly. computers. They have to open up a, a record book and, and look and check mm -hmm. that. Yep. And essentially, so, you know, we would hang out there. Sometimes if I knew he's going to be there, I would bring like an extra orange Julius over and give it to him, even though they're the most disgusting thing in the whole world. Um, or the hot dogs that had gone, oh. you know, past their hour. Um, so that was that sort of thing. Orange Julius hot dogs are still a thing that I remember with disgust and revulsion 30 some years later. <laughs> they were the worst. Um, awesome. Awesome. Uh, Eric, um, you kind of think that one of these other te teens, one of your other characters actually kind of maybe knows what's going on. Like, like maybe, maybe gets it more more than the others who who is that so i think i envision so eric envisions this whole team that we have going here as a band and i think that sean's kind of the drummer right uh let me make sure bulldog's the drummer right and abraxas is probably like the bass player or something like that but darlene's the lead singer and i think she's the one who knows what's going on and that's why we're hanging out is because she's going to pull this whole band together. That makes sense to me. So uh, let's say spring uh, for the season of the year, because uh, that allows people to, 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 to bike outside and go to the skate park and uh, hang out and uh, uh, get to the arcade without having to slosh through uh, uh, all of the, the, the snowy mud and stuff. Does that seem fair? Uh, so sc school's still going on. Uh, uh, it's still happening. And uh, uh, the uh, four of you uh, uh, are you know, coming in. Uh, let's say it's a Friday. Um, uh, uh, coming into to, to class. Um, uh, arriving at school, uh, you know, some of you walk, some of you bust, all that jazz. Um, and when you come in, um, you will see off to the side, um, uh, out front, that there is some kind of incident going on. Um, and uh, it looks to you, all of you can see the telltale glow that says that there's something odd there. Some prodigy or memento or something in the midst of that. Um, so, uh, Darlene, what do you do? Uh, I go and scout it out with uh, some of the other girls from the bus. You know, we all have our books out in front of us in that sort of super protective way. And I sort of send them over there and then I drop behind them so I can get an eye on it. But I've got some screen between me and the situation so that no one sees me in case I have to change. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, you will see that there is clearly a kid. Um you recognize him. Uh, his name is Arnold, um, and he's just been pushed down to the ground. 
And there is one of the football players, uh, uh, Jeremy, uh, who has shoved him and knocked him down. And uh, it's you don't see any kind of sign of, of Arnold being a prodigy, but you can see the glow like he has a memento in his pocket. Um, uh, like he has one of these objects. You can see that telltale glow that tells you there's this object of, of power there. Um, and, and this, this football player is, is just kind of knocked to the ground and you're not sure whether it's going to go any further. Um, uh, Anthony, what would you do? Oh, I'd, uh, I probably would, uh, I probably like, well, before I pick a mass, I probably would have looked for a teacher, but, uh, would you go this, get a teacher? Well, if it, no, because uh, I'm assuming I also know that there is a memento. Well, you saw that, screen. that, uh, mark from a distance. You're not sure exactly what is going on, but yeah, in that case, I wouldn't, I, I think I'd want to check it out myself uh, in case I had to do something regarding that, that I didn't wouldn't want to see teachers sing. So probably would, uh, uh, step in and try, just try to get between the two. Maybe not necessarily uh, probably focus more on just shielding uh, the uh... Okay. Uh, I think that's going to be a, let's let's make this kind of a social task here to kind of get in the way and interrupt. Uh, these are football players uh, oh, okay. you know, in, in the middle of things and, and to kind of get your guts together to, to push out there. I think it's going to be difficulty four. Okay. To do that. So, do you have any skills or anything that would apply here on your teen self? Uh, no. And the teen skills, are we allowed to just fill them in as, as we see fit? Absolutely. Okay. I guess they're, well, I know one of them, but that won't be helpful. Uh, right now I've, I've got to assume that I don't really Oh well, non-combat tasks when I'm holding the law. I've got I can do I can apply that. Um, That's perfect. Just, yeah, yeah. If I'm since I'm not really being confrontational because I know physically I I don't stand a chance. So yeah, just basically just try to uh, you know probably just like just be forthright and earnest and try to shame them into uh, into leaving uh, poor Anthony so alone need, or Arnold. Yeah, That's going to reduce difficulty down by one. So you're going to okay. need a nine or better to succeed at this. Ah, and is this the point where we open up roll for the, yeah. the roll? Here, I'll, I'll drop the link back in the, the chat message here. Equal advanced Martin. Uh, this is another one of those excellent <laughs> games where I never roll. <laughs> right. Uh, so I'm submitting a D20. I'll label this uh, Abraxas. And let's see, what's the closest to deep red? Oh, we'll just make it red and submit. And hey, I've got a die. Okay, now it's time to roll the die. And hey, I rolled a 13. Okay, uh, so you get in the middle and and kind of draw attention and kind of get, and uh, the football player, you know, it's not just this guy, Jeremy. He has a couple of his buddies by him, but you kind of get the, the situation uh, de-escalated a little. Um, yeah, I think what, what I do is I'd, I'd cite the since I am lawful by nature, I'd cite the fact that uh, at least according to the um, the charter for the football team or whatever they have, you know, they could get uh, suspended from a game if they're caught uh, bullying, even though it never gets enforced. But I don't need to bring that up. You don't need to bring that up, uh, Sean. What would you do? See this kid on the ground? He's clearly got one of his mementos. Uh, uh, you see that. Uh, 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 Anthony has has stepped in the way. Ooh, wow, this is not really my thing. Um, I, I mean, I, I'll look around. Are there any teachers? Teachers are good at breaking this stuff up. That's their job. Um, I will say no, but I'm going to do an intrusion here. And I'm going to offer you an XP. Um, and you get to give one of those X, get one for yourself and one for a an, uh, another player. Take one, Anthony. You're going to cause this problem. It's your fault. Um, you kind of look and by the buses, uh, you see a guy that 
A, looks really out of place to you. Uh, and B, he has a very strong glow. Um, there's there's a certain amount of uh, the, the depth of the glow that you've perceived with the mementos and these prodigies that that kind of uh, defines their level a little bit. Um, and this guy, he looks he looks weird. And I'm going to grab up a picture here. I'll drop it in the NPCs. Grab that. One sec. I'm so glad it never goes to the right folder at first. That's what he looks like if you check the NPC page. Um, and he is looking right at you. What do you do? Darlene. <laughs> kind of shuffle over closer to Darlene and Dar Darlene, look at that freaky guy. It's like a biker or something. And she'll look over, and you'll see her eyes, and it's like, like, oh, God. <laughs> and so she'll sort of... Now, I have some skills, like stink eye or whatever. Do I have to have my mask on in order to Absolutely. use Absolutely. All of your powers, <sighs> you have to have your mask on. There's, there's, there's a couple of you have, like, an ability that's listed as a teen thing, but otherwise you have to put your mask on to hate, use those. Okay. Uh, then essentially she's going to see that. She'll roll her eyes. She'll step up to um, Arnold... Um, she'll kind of give a look to the football players and say, we went to kindergarten together and she'll pull him up. Okay. Um, essentially. <laughs> let, let me, let me cut now to Eric and see what Eric is doing. Um, as you kind of pull him up, Eric, what do you want to do? So I think you Eric, Jeremy. Is, yeah, Eric's actually a, a walker. He comes into school and he's kind of walking across the field across from, uh, school and sees this whole mess going on. And when he sees it's Jeremy, um, he come, you know, he, turns and heads in that direction of where everybody is and you know he sees the glows and everything but his focus is on jeremy and he gets up in jeremy's face and he kind of pushes him you know a little bit and says you know why don't you leave him alone we all know what you're looking for you know you're looking to take out you know um how much of a slut your mom is and why don't you just figure it out yeah all right so you're gonna get up in his face, and you're going to try and are, are you trying to start a fight, or you're trying to intimidate him? Um, I'm kind of trying to intimidate him and change his focus. Primarily, it's change his focus because okay. I know I know Arnold probably can't take the beating that I can. Okay, uh, if your intention is to intimidate, that's one difficulty. If your intention is to get slugged, that's a lower difficulty. Um, let's do that. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I say it's difficulty two uh, to get uh, uh, punched in the face by this football player. Nice. Okay, um, so I have a teen ability that in a teen situation I can escalate threat to an art form. Okay. Um, the difficulty of your attempts to intimidate, cajole, or threaten is decreased by one step. I don't. I think I'm still getting slugged. Right. Yeah. yeah so 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 now now we're at a difficulty one to 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 draw his attention. And I'll just roll that. Okay. I got a 16. So, yeah, you will draw his attention. Um, at that point, I need you to make a speed defense roll. Yeah. Um, I think this is a football player. He's pretty strong. He's not a fighter. But, I, uh, but he's right up in your face, and he is going to punch you. Difficulty three to dodge this. Okay, so um, I added a skill of danger sense to my. Uh, oh no 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 danger sense! That's that's not a teen skill. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll take that off then. Yeah. Um, so I think I kind of am expecting this. I know what's going to happen, so I think I kind of want to roll with the punches. Um, so that makes it a difficulty too. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll give you that as an asset. That seems fair. And then I'll roll that. And I got a 14. Okay. So he goes to slug you. Like, he actually cocks back and goes to punch you, and you will get out of the way. Um, so uh, I want to check in uh, with Sean again since this guy is still there, and then I'm going to come to Anthony. Okay? Um, Sean, uh, uh, Darlene seems to have not taken this seriously. That guy's freaky deaky. I am looking for some place to go put on my mask. Okay. Um, kind of. Uh, where do you think you could could get to to put your mask on? Were we out by the buses? I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, like like imagine that you're out front. The front doors of the school. You're on that front lawn, sidewalks out there. That kind of uh, uh, front area. The place that we see in all the movies of high schools where the cars pull up and there's that the, them all coming up. That kind of thing. Oh, well, yeah, a bunch of cars pulling out. It's probably like a parking lot, yeah, so he'll just run over and try to find some big truck or something to hide around. He just needs to get out his – maybe he'll jump in the bed. He'll jump in the bed of a truck. Okay. Nobody will see him there, and he can put on his so, mask. Uh, you take off, and uh, you will go over there, and you'll pull that mask on. Um, Anthony, uh, there's this fight going on, um, and – now this guy's going after Eric. Yeah, I'll um, I'll, I'll see Eric can take care of himself. I'll, I'll go to Arnold and just try to like take him aside, uh, just like take him by the shoulder and, and just gently nudge him and say, "Hey, let's 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 get out of here. Let's let's head for the library or something." Okay. Uh, so you and Darlene, uh, 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 Anthony comes over. Uh, Darlene, <clears throat> you've gotten Arnold up. Uh, uh, Anthony comes over. What do you guys want to do then? Well, we know that Arnold has that thing in his pocket, so yes. it's essentially getting him off and away. Um, the thing is, is that Sean pointed out that guy to me, so I'm looking to see who that guy is looking at if it's a Arnold or where Sean just ran off to. Oh, he's moving over towards the parking lot now. Oh, is he? Well, then I've got all these people behind me, which is or so I'll go. I'll give um, uh, you the the thumbs up to take Arnold off to the side. Say, see what's in his pocket. Really quiet. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm essentially going to start circling around so that I too can get behind some cars and come around if there's some sort of bad thing happening for Sean because I want to get my mask on. All right. Uh, so yeah, you can you can, can move over there. Uh, get your mask on. Uh, Anthony, you want to get this? Uh, you want to get Arnold to a safe place here? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can get him inside the the school entryway and uh, get him settled there. Um, uh, and some teachers will come up. Um, yeah. They hear that there's a fight. Uh, before the teachers show up, I'd like to uh, say something to Arnold if if I have the time for that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I'll I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a fib. I'm gonna I'm gonna break one of the commandments. Uh, I'm going to say. Um, and uh, I'm gonna uh, tell Arnold that uh, the jocks lately have been pulling pranks. Uh, they've been uh, they've been harassing kids and then pickpocketing them while they're while they're uh, and you know f you know all freaked out and uh, not not likely to notice. So we better like check our pockets to make we're gonna check our pockets to make sure everything is there. I, I'd like leave the example by just taking out, you know, my wallet and, you know, I'm sure I've got like a little Bible in my, in my other pocket or something. So you, what's, what's your pockets? Are you all clear? Do you have everything? So, uh, I don't think we need to do a roll with this, but what you'll see him okay. do when you say that his hand goes to his pocket, like, like that's immediately his hand. Like he knows there's something up and you see him reach in and he, he, you know, he clutches something, uh, in his hand, like, like it's the most important thing, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and he starts to 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 go to to move off. Okay. Okay. So he definitely knows about these things, mm -hmm. um, uh, and definitely brought this with a purpose. Okay. okay. So I think at this point, now that we're alone, I might want to like actually um, try we'll to come back to his confidence. Yeah, we'll come okay. back to you in a second. Um, uh, I want to see what uh, uh, Eric is doing, and then I'm going to come to uh, the battle in the parking lot. Yeah, so I think I, I think at this point Eric is just taunting Jeremy and taking whatever beating is necessary. Okay, uh, so what's your intention here? What is it that you want to have happen? 
Um, I think I just basically wanted to come in and provoke things so that um, Jeremy paid attention to me and Arnold could uh, get away with everyone else. And that was it. Okay. Uh, that, that, that will happen. I, I think that the tail end of that is going to be, you know, after, after he's kind of pushing and he's got his buddies with him, that you will see one of the teachers come, come running out and, you know, is, is yelling at all of you to, uh, uh, you know, uh, get apart. Um, and probably looks at you more like you're the troublemaker because you're this metalhead kid. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so there's teachers up with you, gets it spread apart. So you get, you get some breathing room and the football players are pushed. Arnold looks like he's to safety now. Um, I'm going to cut away from you. So um, I don't think Jeremy had any, you know, I didn't land any good hits on him, but I think he got a good hit on me or two. So I've got like a bloody lip or something. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, got that. And you can feel that kind of swelling up when you get hit, it goes that numb and then you can start to feel like it's going to hurt after a while. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this, Dig Doug, what does it look like when you put the mask on? Oh man. When I throw on the mask and then I buckle the, the dog collar everything starts to like grow, but it does it in this like weird bubbly thing. Um, Oh, there was like a, one of the werewolf movies. I remember where like the skin kind of, it's like they had, you know, the the skin, the muscles will grow in an uneven way. So Uh there's this like horror shot of all of the different parts of his body growing in really awkward and bizarre ways. Uh, And then, you know, I imagine the truck kind of lowers down a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) Um, uh, uh, and then you pop out. Yeah, I do. Okay. Bulldog pops out for sure. Bulldog pops out and you will see this guy. Uh, he is walking sort of steadily towards where you're at. Like he clearly saw you go this way and he is following you. Cool. So you want and a piece he... of me? Steps out of the, he doesn't have to step that far down out of the truck bed. And he goes, yes, yes, I do want a piece of you. And I'm going to take it right now. And uh, comes on up to you. um, And uh, he actually goes to, uh, uh, takes his hand. You see his hand kind of clench. He's got those rings in it. um, And you will see that hand become like silver. Um, and then he swings to to just hit you in your midsection. Um, so you may make a speed defense roll. Okay. Um, difficulty here is a six. So it's a six level six. Okay, awesome. Yes. So it's an eighteen or better to avoid this blow. All right. Uh, so I'm taking a look. I've got. Very little of this gonna other than just spinning out of my speed pool that it looks like that will work here. Okay. Double check my no need for weapons, an armed attack, golem healing, stone, golem body, bash. Yeah. <laughs> um I'm going to so right now I would need an eighteen or better. Yeah. And a level six. I'm going to spend three speed to take okay. this down to a three. Uh, well, it'll go down by one shift. So it'll go oh, down to a five. Three to one shift. Oh, crap. And then the five to the 15 or better. So I'm going to spend six. Oh. No, wait. No, I'm tough as all get out. Yeah, you're tough as all get out, dude. Psh, I'll just roll. Let's have you roll for it, man. Rinky dink guy. Bring it. What am I afraid of you? You're like five and a half feet tall. I've rolled an eleven, which means I failed. Okay. Uh, he will he will hit you for seven points of damage. Wow. What does that mean? That means your armor absorbs two of it. Okay. So you take five off your current might pool. Ooh, it's a good um, thing that that's my highest pool. So yay. Uh, yeah, and 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 kind of smashes you back. Probably the 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 hit that truck, and it you know does that jerk back where the brakes kind of lock as you smack back into it. Nice. Um, let me get Darlene 
has changed into her mask and she's coming up. Let me let me see what she's doing. Okay, I've come up and uh, I've put on my mask, uh, which is essentially... How does that look when you transform? Oh, well, essentially what happens is she puts them on. And, and mind you, they start with those, you know, Elvis Costello horn rim glasses with all the sort of stuff on there. So she takes it out of her glasses case, puts <laughs> those on. And essentially what happens is uh, she always has her head down when she does that because it's kind of a big, weird thing. And when she puts her face up, it's like everything goes black and white. And then a splash of color forms. So I think right now, because they're... Um, in there with all the different cars on probably the splash of color is the same color as the car that's right next to her okay. and so it becomes this sort of big splash of baby blue because it's you know a baby blue chevette of some student you know some senior student there okay so all right and, and so you. um and so and other than that like she doesn't look like darlene anymore except there'll be like always one characteristic so like it might be her hair color but now it's black or white or whatever I mean, it might be her hairstyle or it might be her nose or something like that but it's not like so essentially what it is 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 actually i think that as soon as she like kind of looks up and she sees bulldog get hit and i think she's going to just yell no um which is a sonic blast okay all right so uh, he has a, a, a difficulty to hit him of five. Okay. Okay. Um, um, you have a, a one shift with your sonic blast, so it becomes difficulty four. Okay. Um, and I can do, uh, let's see here. Um, I guess I can spend speed or... Um, uh, be, it'll be intellect. Oh, it'd be intellect. Okay. And it'd be two points because you have an edge of one in it. Okay. So I will spend two points to give my... Wait, I have to spend two points of it to get... To get the difficulty down by one. Okay. All right. I will do that. I have to roll um, okay. with dice because of the tablet that I'm using. So we went from five to yes. four, four to three, to three. With effort. So you need a nine or better. Okay. I can do this. I rolled an 11, so I do do that. Um, so what does that look like? Um, I think that the thing that it looks like is uh, when she yells no, it does this thing of like very varying uh, white and black rings, like sound rings coming from her and getting like kind of uh, wider, um, but they kind of go shooting out towards her so you could see them visually they look like they've been animated in okay. a bad mu you know music video and then they hit the guy that's perfect so uh <laughs> it will hit him um and it, it will kind of knock him back uh uh into this car uh, and you'll see some of it will wash out and uh various car windows will get shattered and uh You'll hear this car is protected by Viper and, uh, you know, the other various, uh, you know, uh, car alarms going off there uh, when that happens. Um, uh, and let me cut. I mean, I want to see what the other two are doing. And then I'm going to come back to Bulldog. This guy, it shook him, but he is still up, Sherry. Um, I think you're the next closest uh, to this situation, Eric. You hear that sound and uh, you know, there's some sort of crashing, something going on there uh, uh, in the parking lot. What do you want to do? So I think Eric is, you know, he's in this cluster of uh, football kids that are all kind of pushing him around a little bit as the teacher walks them back into class. Okay. So as their, as their attention, we walk past, past the school bus. I think Eric basically does this little, you know, spin to get to the side of the school bus as the group continues on. Okay. And then he's going to... Um, lay down, roll under the school bus, and reach into his jean jacket pocket for the mask. Oh, yeah. And, of course, you're under the school bus. There's a, there's a leaky oil plate, so you roll into, like, some, some oil that's dripped on the ground. Of course, um, yes. Um, and what does it look like when you transform? What What is the effect again? I think that – so whenever he puts on this mask, it's the little stickers and all that kind of stuff to form, like, a kiss mask. And he puts it on, and, like, light blasts out. So okay. it's like stage lighting, you know, that lights up underneath the bus. And then 
basically he rolls out and spotless and he's in this great costume looking thing. Perfect. Uh, uh, Anthony, what do you do? You'll want to uh, let me know once the commotion is notable from where we're at. Uh, uh, yeah, you're hearing some noise out front. Um, and definitely there's sort of the, the group that was out there is, uh, of, of kids and stuff that were coming inside have kind of stopped because now there's some, something going down in the parking lot. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll, uh, kind of go into semi, uh, urgency. I'll go into urgency mode and I'll just say, look, Anthony, I know, or Arnold, <laughs> Arnold, do you, I know what you have there because we have things like that too. Eyes get wide. That's right. There's more than one. Um, and I'll. I'll, I'll show I'll show mine and we'll see if he shows his. Um, I'll take uh, my mask out of uh, my backpack, and it should be. And we're we're known in the city, so it'll be readily apparent who I really am um, once he rec sees the Abraxas mask. Um. All right. Uh, did you do? Do you want the? Uh, I'm actually going to uh, do an intrusion here. Oh, okay. I'll offer you a point of XP. That's and if you have a point right. that you can give to somebody else, I will. I'll give it up to. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm. I just really scrolled one way too far. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, these sheets. I'll give it to. Uh, let's see. Um, to to Warlock because he's uh, he kicked off the big distraction and is taking a beating. And looks like he's going to get blamed for it. So I think he's yeah. he's earned the second point. Um, when oh. you pull this mask oh. out, Arnold looks at it, and his reaction is not one of "oh, oh," it's of terror. Okay. Um, and he runs. Oh, okay. <laughs> into the school, like he takes off. Like, like what you have shown him, he's this is not what he wanted to see, and he runs into the school. Okay. Oh. So, uh, I'll go after him since I don't know if he's going to like tell uh, right now. I'm worried that he's just going to like, you know, tattle on us. So I'm going to put on the map and see if I can't grab him um, before he gets too far. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of people around. Yeah. Oh, there are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a going to be my next question. So yeah, no, he's, he's probably the, the, the order of questions there is probably should be reversed there. <laughs> right. um, I'll just run after him then. Okay, so you're right through the cold, kind of pull it. Well, we'll come back to you on that as you chase him down. Bulldog. <clears throat> Wasn't bad. My turn. Mm. Bring it. Yeah, I think it's time for a punch. Okay. Uh, so uh, you need his difficulty to hit him is a five. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, you've got one shift with your punch. Right. So it becomes a four. And if you want, you can spend effort. It would cost you one to do that because you're of your might edge. Now you could do that to decrease the difficulty or increase your damage. Either I'd like one. To decrease the difficulty because. Um... Uh, Babylon Pi is here, and I do not want to miss. Okay, so that'll decrease it. Uh, you spend one point, and you need a difficulty three, so you need a nine, unless you have any kind of assets or anything like that. And when you say one point of effort, I'm I'm look I'm, I'm oh, uh, so uh, when I say one point, you spend one point from your current might pool. Okay, cool. So you say I spend from the pool because I was that's what I was going to say I was going to do, but then and it's cheaper because I have an edge, right? That's yeah. why I'm able to spend one from that thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, I will spend if I spend two, does it take it down two shifts? No, because you guys are tier one. You can only use effort once right now on any okay, so particular I'll spend action. One out of my might pool, and that takes it down to a three. Is that right? Uh, that yeah, so we got five or four skill. because of punching, yeah. Yeah, one so it's because a of nine or better. Okay, now I'll, I'll tell you another trick is do you have any assets? Assets are like stuff that you have, uh, that you want to use equipment that you want to uh, use, uh, to, to get yourself another shift. I have a pummeling melee attack, it's one less point of damage, but daisy's target. I have 
I can conceal a heavy weapon in, or an inanimate object weighing up to one ton <laughs> on my person. <laughs> or there's also it. stuff around you <laughs> in the parking lot. Oh, yeah, I love that one. The Where did that come from? So, can, can I hit him with the truck? Can I pick up the truck and just mash him with it? That is I, terrible. I figure you can probably grab a, a big piece off of it if you want. That seems like a fair thing. Sweet. I grab the tailgate, the big Toyota tailgate, to the Toyota on the back of it, tailgate, and just whack him upside the head with okay. it. So that's an asset. It's equipment. So that'll reduce the difficulty by another one. So it becomes you need uh, it's difficulty two. So you need a six or better. Oh, my goodness. You're so getting hit, sucker. Here we go. Reroll. Hold on. I rolled a one. That's awesome. I rolled the one. That's the that's what I wanted, right? Yeah. The one's good now, in this game. Here's your choice. <laughs> uh, you have X. You have XP, so you could spend XP to reroll, or or that's a major effect failure. Now I'm not spending. I only have one XP. You know, I, I'd like to. I'd like to get something out of this damn game at some point. Dang it! So, so hit me with your best shot. Uh, you go to swing to do this. Um, and he's like a blur, like he matrix styles bends away as this thing comes by and this thing is not particularly put well together. So it comes out of your hand and like, it's like, uh, uh, a flying disc that cuts across the tops of like eight cars, this tailgate and just tears the top off of eight of them. Tops go flying, glass goes everywhere. Just a huge amount of collateral damage. Does that seem fair? No, but okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's just it's just an absolute mess. Um, it was worth it for an XP. Yes. Uh, uh, Babylon Pie. Muted. I have an ability for someone who's level three or lower. Would that apply to this person? No, he is definitely a higher power oh, figure. Oh, crap. Um, okay, then. Um, let's see here. I think that... Um, what have we seen before? Well, you said that we've seen other of these um, super guys or whatever around or heard about them um what are some other like good good guy ones um i want like essentially to make it seem like one of those is approaching does that make any sense so i want i need that information oh uh, okay. let's see well then, then that's a good let's let's establish that fact okay you guys are a kind of rarity let's say that there is one other mask that you've that you know about that has been a like a powerful solo hero that that people are kind of talking about but he's the only other one besides you that are sort of people think you know it might be a good guy so who is that should it be someone patriotic it is the 80s after all oh yeah um Like a Rambo esque kind of character. Yeah, uh, his name is Rad Dawn. Okay, <laughs> um, and uh, he's got kind of a. He, he looks like this Rambo figure. <laughs> is he wearing a hat backwards. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh yes, like a trucker cap hat. That's the best. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, and he's got like like a a, a a costume made out of an American flag. Uh, and stuff, and uh, uh, he's he's been more visible, probably the most visible uh, of the masks, and it's actually probably you're worried about because it's going to cause problems. So you're going to try and do what with this? Well, essentially, he always, um, as he's approaching a scene, he fires off his machine guns, right? <laughs> so okay. I'll start to sort of, you know, triple shot, you know, where it's a, it's a little spray, little spray, little spray of the machine guns is what you hear, uh, essentially, that it sounds like it's getting closer from one of the directions. Okay. So I think this is going to be a an intimidation task. Oh, okay. That sounds uh, awesome. Uh, you're using your sound controls, so that uh, normally difficulty is five. 
uh, sound control reduce it to four. Then you can use intellect if you want to uh, affect that. Yeah, sure. So, um, so take another two off. Yeah. And get that down to three again. Yep. Okay. And pretty soon I'm going to drop because I'll be so tired. Ah, but I rolled a 19. So apparently I wanted this to work. Um, so, yeah, that throws him off. Like, he gets ready for it. Um, and, in fact, he's looking, like, where the sound is coming from. It draws his attention off from Bulldog and draws his attention off from Eric as a warlock approaches. Does that seem cool? Like, that's a minor effect? Yes. I can live with that. Uh, warlock, you come... Uh, up and you see Bulldog uh, devastate uh, uh, a lot of people's cars in the parking lot. Um, and uh, this guy is looking away from you. He's clearly who they're fighting. So I think that the way that this looks is, you know, Warlock steps out from underneath the, the bus and he sees this stuff going on in the parking lot over there. And I'm going to use my far step power which allows okay. me to leap through the air. So I do the whole 80s hair band, you know, I land and there's like a almost a guitar thrum without a guitar. <laughs> and um, then I'm going to use my onslaught. And this is the eye beams that shoot out. Um, I think these eye beams, there's a choice in onslaught. I think the, these affect uh, the, what's the word? Not physical, but mental. Intellect, yeah, yeah. And, okay. Yeah, they affect the mind. Okay. So basically, what you'd see normally whenever this happens is that the person gets hit by these eye beams, and you get the cheesy, you know, color over the person, and then they kind of bend over as if they're, you know, something's hurting them. Um, so uh, I'm going to spend. So it was. Uh, so difficulty five. Okay. You have an asset that uh, Darlene created, so it becomes difficulty four. And then I have a shift on attacks. That becomes difficulty three. Okay. So um, it normally costs one intellect pool. I have an intellect of one. Um, I'm going to spend a couple of points for the getting into the scene. And then okay. I'm going to spend um, a level of effort. So that would cost three. Cost to, uh, yeah, because you've already spent on this action. To get it down to two. Let's see if I can roll better than a six. And I rolled a fourteen. Yay! Okay, uh, so that will hit him, and it will it do it to it does two points of intellect damage, right? That's right, two points of uh, intellect damage. So, uh, this guy does cringe when he gets hit by that. Um, he's kind of stepping back, like that kind of pierced through his defenses a little. Um, uh, I'm going to cut back in real quick back to Anthony. Um, do you really want to kind of chase down Arnold? Get a hold of him. Oh, yeah, I probably sh I probably shouldn't leave my buddies in the, in the mix. Uh, I'll I'll just have to take a chance and hope that. Yep. Yeah, I, I, you're hesitant. What what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I think I'd better run back in. But since everyone, since clearly we're in a big fight scene, I'm gonna mask up. Okay. Uh, so on this action, you're gonna go and put on your mask so you can head out. Uh, where do you go to put your mask on? Uh, are there any convenient bushes nearby? Uh, run outside and kind of jump into the bushes while everybody's attention is on the, the fight in the parking lot? Yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to have you make a, a speed test on this, though, because there are a lot of people around here. Okay. It's, it's, and they've, you've got a distraction, but I'm going to say it's difficulty three that no one spots you putting on the mask. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't think I've... Yeah, I don't think I've got any skills that can relate to this. My, my teen skills being Revelation, Prophecy, Dungeons and & Dragons, and Skateboarding. Yeah, this is not your skill. Not nope. your strong suit. So it's difficulty three, so you need a nine or better, unless you want to spend effort. Uh, an effort. Uh, an effort would be my speed pool, yeah. It would yep. cost me three to decrease the difficulty by one. Is that what yep. it was? Yep. Okay, so if I spend three and take difficulty down by one, it'll be... Six or better. Six or okay. Yeah. I like those odds. I'll go ahead and spend three. So my okay. speed pool goes down. Oh, wait. I need to modify the current column. That will go down to seven. And uh, let's go ahead and roll that die and hope. Uh, it actually it uses oh. your team pool, not your mask pool. 
So, oh, did I mark it? You just did under a uh, Braxis rather than above. I see. So let me correct that. And my team pool is. Oh, look at that! It's much not much much less optimal. All right. Well, I'll spend it anyway because yeah, we got okay. a secret. All right. Let's see it. All right. Reroll. Oh, not so good. I rolled a four. Okay. Uh, so you are able to get the mask on mm -hmm. um, and uh, 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 pull that and transform. But uh, as you are kind of standing up, uh, kind of out of the corner of your eye, uh, you see somebody staring at you, this girl. Mm -hmm. She has that prodigy glow like you do. Okay. And she's clearly seen you change. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll I'll, come back to you in sure. in a sec. Okay, okay. Um, Bulldog, uh, this guy's action has been blown. Uh, uh, he was going to swing at you, uh, but uh, Darlene did that distraction to him, and then uh, you saw uh, Eric land. Um, now, what do you do? Oh man, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if I should like hold him down so somebody else can mash on him because I'm not having the most success. Oh, man, Babylon Pie, she could do a lot of damage to him. I just know. I just know. I'm going to I'm gonna grab and hold him. Is there any kind of team-up maneuver that's possible in this game? Oh, yeah. So so what, when you do that, you're actually creating an asset for your companions. I will create an asset for my companions of uh, he can't run away. Okay. Uh, to grab and hold on to him. Uh, so there's still a strength task. Uh, difficulty is five, but the strength task takes it down to four. Okay. Uh, so right now you would need a, a 12 or better. Um, I will spend another point of effort. Okay. Uh, it becomes it a nine, nine or better. Awesome. Um, well, I have faith that I can roll better than a one. Not much faith that I can roll better than a nine. That's okay. Here we go. I've rolled a four. I'm going to spend my XP. <laughs> <sighs> Just because I don't want to look bad, I'm trying. I'm trying to look good. Come on, bulldog! Come on! Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna click the button to reroll, and a five. That's great. So I fail. I fail three times in a row. Uh, so uh, you will go to to do that and to grab at him, but uh, uh, he kind of pushes off a, a, away from you, um, and uh, uh, he's essentially. His his energies are 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 turned to trying to uh, evade what you're doing right now, um, uh, and uh, I, I think that uh, we have to go to Darlene because his action will go after all you guys have gone. Excuse me, but my powers are based on him emoting something. So what is it that he says when he evades him? Oh, let's see. I think he says. Uh, that's a good try, child, but you'll never get a hold of me. But he says it with a Russian accent sort of thing. Dang it. He said something that wasn't particularly useful to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so essentially, let's see here. Um, essentially, everyone's starting to come through are starting to uh, get here or whatever. Uh -huh. So yeah, you have Eric here definitely, and you ex uh, expect that uh, Anthony will be on his way soon. Um, all right, then I think that what I'm going to do is I am going to set up encouragement, which okay. is the ability that essentially uh, anyone who's like near me that's doing this stuff, they can modify their difficulty um uh, by one step on to their benefit so and i'll just say attack tasks okay so, uh what does that look like essentially she has to go I, she's going to be singing an amazing song about how we will not be defeated and it's essentially like the mic appears and it's all it's it's super like lighting and all of that stuff very music video Okay. Um, and the thing is, we will not be defeated. Just repeat it over and over again with a synth thing. Okay. <laughs> and we had drums because that's how that's how the eighties really were. And <laughs> so. the drum machine going. 
Okay. Um, uh, Eric, uh, now that you have a soundtrack, uh, what do you do? So I think that, um, I think we need to try to overwhelm this guy. Okay. okay. He is stronger than, you know, he's stronger than like Bulldog. And he's able to take my eye beams, all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of scared. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to call my future self. Okay. Um, so that's uh, three might points and a time duplicate of myself appears somewhere in the sight range and tackles a person or lands on the target. So I think this is, he basically lands on top of uh, this Russian dude. And he's this all tatted up roadie looking guy with a tire iron and just kind of wails at him. And mechanically what this does is it gives everyone else an uh, an uh, asset to attacks. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. So uh, uh, spend your points for that. And uh, out of thin air during this this uh, uh, song, this roadie character who looks vaguely, vaguely like Eric, uh, uh, appears and starts wailing on this guy. Uh, uh, I'm Anthony, sorry, Lil, we're in high school. Anyone over the age of 30 doesn't look vaguely like anyone to us. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. That's right. You never recognize those things. Okay, so yeah, so this stranger uh, appears out of nowhere, but you've seen this effect before. Um, Anthony, what does your demonic entrance look like? So I, yeah, I'd, I'd slip the mask on. I'd probably um, recite some incantation, some incantation I uh, deciphered from, uh, I don't know, I pulled off a D&D mo module or something, or, or, made up stuff to that effect. And as I do that, basically, um, as I slip the mask over like this red mist, or maybe more like a red slime just starts oozing out, almost like it, like I'm drowning from within the mask. But um, as it covers my body, that's how that's how my body uh, transforms. And uh, then the mist kind of comes off me and that's how I uh, shift into a Braxis form. And I think it's just kind of more, um, let's say he's more kind of like, Spindly and sharp, like a lot of sharp jagged edges. Okay. Um, and uh, that's that's what he looks like, kind of more um, elongated. That more like elongated and angular than big and bulky. Okay. And and you kind of rush out of the bushes into the parking lot to engage in this. Mm -mm. And uh, uh, and see I, I will tell you that everyone who is there on the front that have been kind of watching to see what's going on, as soon as this demon comes popping out of the bushes, they probably run screaming back. Okay. <laughs> uh, so all of you over there will hear screams from the front lawn. Um, so what is it you want to do when you pop up and see this guy getting wailed on by Bulldog and uh, this old dude? Yeah, well, whoever is doing... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just try to. Um, I think I'm going to try to lay on the death touch on one of these. Uh, one of the, one of these uh, villains, um, preferably. Let's see. Preferably probably the, the actual villain. What's that? Preferably the, the the one who looks like the actual villain. You're gonna gonna. Oh, that's true. Because I well, I know I know who, what Eric looks like. I, I've seen him. Well, it, it, and this figure is oh. definitely uh, along with Bulldog beating on this guy. Oh, I see. So yeah, I'll, I'll just follow their lead and uh, see if I can. Uh, apply the death touch um okay. and my my one of my clawed hands will just start oozing um like a whole bunch of uh green or red deep red blood red ichor and that, so that's how it manifests you've got an asset from sherry that takes the difficulty mm -hmm. down to four you've got an yeah. asset from uh uh eric that takes it down to three and then you've got uh a a skill with this attack takes it down to a two so all you need Ooh. Right now, before we do anything else, is a six or better. I feel good about those chances. And if I wanted, to, if I wanted to decrease it, I'd be taking off the might pool in my Abraxas form. Uh, but, uh, it would be actually off your intellect pool. Oh, intellect pool. Okay. Well, I think. Uh, let's see. I, I'll I'll take my chances with that because I think I'll try I'll try again because six. Okay. Is, uh, yeah, six is a good number. There's, what What are the odds that you're going to roll below that? Oh, one in five. Let's. <laughs> Oh, but not this time. Yeah, I, I, I got him solidly. I just basically just slap it right on his face and the ooze just dripping maybe even into his nostrils, something really gross. What did you roll? Uh, 17. Oh, weird, because I'm not seeing another roll for your party. Oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, it's under the Abrex, it's the red D20. Did you say red D20 under uh, the label Abrexis? Weird. Uh, 
I don't see either of those. Are you on? Um, I'm an e equally advanced Martin. Weird. That, I don't. That see is it. bizarre. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. Um, that, that, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll have to report a bug. Uh, uh, that's because that's, that's literally the first time I've seen that. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you will hit him, and that does four points of damage, right? Uh, forty-six, I believe it says. Uh, no, it's actually four D. The D is just for damage. Ew. Oh, I. Oh. Yeah, everything set damage. I just put that in there to note for myself that that's what it's referring to. So yeah, you'll hit him. That ooze goes onto him. He'll kind of draw back away from that. Um, you're the last person to attack him. So I think he's going to swing to hit you. Um, and you see his uh, arm uh, uh, goes uh, into to metal um, uh, on this side. Uh, and uh, uh, he essentially goes to just knock you back. Uh, so you need to make a speed test to defend. Okay. Difficulty is a five. Difficulty is a five. So, oh, yeah, that's not good. So let's see. Um... My skills. I'm looking at my Braxis skills. I've uh, initiative fast. That doesn't do anything for dodging. Or is that strictly for initiative? That's oh, strictly for speed. initiative. I do have speed defense. That lowers it down to a four. Okay, fantastic. Um, so I can't. I'm not really seeing anything else that I could. Okay. Apply to that. Uh, Resist questioning stealth initiative fast. If you want to spend three points from your speed pool, we we'll go down another tier. Yeah, let's do that because I don't Okay. Oh, Absolutely. Do so you need a nine or better not to get hit by this dude? Okay. Let's see what happens. Rolling again on my invisible die. Yes. <laughs> and I ooh, I'm glad I spent those points. I rolled a ton. Okay. Uh so he goes to swing and he probably uh, comes past you and hits the nearest car and just absolutely uh crunches in uh the, the back trunk of this pinto. Um, and it kind of folds up there uh, as he does it. It kind of yanks that back. Um, Bulldog. I think I, I think I wasn't able to grab him, so I just got to wail away. Can is he within punching range? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I will do the punching thing because I sucked with everything else. So you've got difficulty five. Yep. One for the, your skill. Uh, uh, another for Sherry's ability, and another for the the old time dude. Oh, this so we is go sounding like I'm. Um, it's pretty good. So that's, that's five, four, four three, 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 uh, two. Three. So you're at a two. So you need a six or better. I can do that. I'm not. Could also spend, spend might. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't have a whole lot left. Spend one point. We get it down to a three or less. Okay, I'll fast. And I really don't want to fail because I keep rolling fours and fives. So here we go. Fourteen. A waste of my might, you you sneaky sneaker. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so this catches him. Um and uh uh you know that blow comes across and and lifts him up. Oh and... man, I, I like scream out, Hadouken! <laughs> um and he will go flying he got hit by that death touch he turned left himself open this he's pushing back on this 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 old dude who appeared from nowhere he'll go flying um uh he will flip through the air um and uh, uh you'll see him land and i'm going to give everybody an xp Unless you want to, sp unless somebody wants to spend an XP that he won't just get away. Mm. Music <coughs> mastermind style. Well, what's what's our chances of actually defeating him once and for all? You don't know. You've done a bunch of damage to him. And what's a good story without a villain? Yeah. It almost seems like we need to have him continue on, but oh, I loathe the idea. Um, uh, he looks at you, Bulldog. Um, after that hit, it kind of shakes, shakes, um, and uh, he goes, "You, I'll be coming for you. Bring it!" <laughs> and he 
goes flat. Like he, he looks like a drawing for a second, like flat two dimensional. And then he's gone. What? And there are all these people screaming and shouting. And there's this fight going on in the thing. And you guys are all in your masks and the school is watching. Hmm. Darlene, what do you do? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so essentially, I think that what I'm going to do is um, I, let's see here. I think I have the spin identity. So I'm going to spend two intellect points uh, just to look like a regular student. Essentially, that's the idea is, yes, I'm still in black and white with a splash of baby blue, but I just look like an ordinary student. Like you got um, it dressed I, up. Okay. Right. That We just happen to be standing here. Um, and I think, yeah, so I, th I think that works for me. I don't think I can do it for other people. It says sounds... you, and then it has a thing where it says um, we're from the government or whatever. So I was uncertain. Okay. Uh, that seems fair. Uh, let's say two points, and we'll make a roll on it because that seems like a, a nice out of combat effect okay. there. Um, uh, uh, what do you want to do, uh, Eric? Yeah, so I think Eric turns to the crowd and goes, you got to fight for your right, and then leaps right and this is jumping outside of maybe up on top of the school and then kind of bounding out of the way okay um so yeah um and your mask is like don't 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 do, do. and you do that that jump and and people see you and you leap up on top of that um abraxas what do you want to do yeah I, I, I don't plan on making any any big speeches to the kids i think i'm just going to try to slink away as um the other, my, as my teammates are making making a scene in their departure, hopefully I'm just going to try to slink away and stealth out of there. Okay. Um, uh, I will say, given given the the fight for your right to party, uh, <laughs> uh, pull that uh, uh, you can if you want to, you can get ducked down and pull your mask off and uh, uh, without any problem. Bulldog. Uh, I think there's a little bit of posing. There's no time limit on this. And I'll, I'll be like, all right, kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> Stay awesome. Okay. Uh, and and uh, do you run off? Do you take off? Well, how do you do this? Just walk off into okay. the sunset until they can't see me, and then I run. <laughs> okay. Because you're hearing the sirens coming. Yeah. <laughs> then I run. Okay. Get behind there. You know, of course, there's houses next to the school. You have to get into somebody's backyard. Um, you know, pull it off as you can hear their their terrier barking. We're hearing, oh yeah, by yellow in the background as I'm hiding. Oh yeah, dun, dun. okay. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so you guys will get disguised. There will be that bit uh, of a problem that you have, Eric. Uh, uh, that you have to figure out how to get down off the roof. <laughs> So I think actually Eric jumps up onto the roof and then jumps back down kind of on oh, the okay. other side of school. Oh, fair enough. But the weird thing that happens is, of course, then he takes off – since nobody, everybody's out at the fight, he takes off his mask and puts it back inside of his jean jacket and goes back and sits down in class. But he's like the only one sitting down in class, which is weird. Yes. <laughs> right? That so. seems fair. Um, uh, so you will get yourself set. Uh, come back in. You've seen this guy. You know that there's Arnold a kid in school who has a memento. Uh, Anthony, you've seen another kid who looks, uh, a girl who looks like she's a prodigy. Um, so there's a couple of things out there uh, in the air. Um, I think this is, we're, we're stopping a little early. We'll do the roses and thorns, but I think it's a good place to stop. Does that seem cool? Um, and uh, we won't have Rich uh, next time. Um uh, uh, but, Sorry. uh, no, no, uh, 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 but that'll be, be, uh, cool. So, uh, 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 we can certainly, uh, work it out. Um, uh, let's do roses and thorns. Uh, if you guys don't mind, um, we did just a, a little bit of, of play, but I hope that was, uh, demonstrative of how the system works. Um, 
Stephen, uh, let me start with you with thorns. And I'm going to do something that Rich showed me yesterday, and, and I'm going to go last. Uh, okay. Um, thorns. Um, I would actually say thorns for, you know, leading up to this, was trying to decide on um, what kind of character to play. Okay. Um, so in general, you know, a lot of games that I play are con games, and they tend to come in with a, you know, here's your pre-gen. Mm -hmm. But I get to choose from a list. This was a little bit more complicated, so it took me a little time to go, oh, what do I really want to play? That's just because I had to make choices and they weren't already made for me. <laughs> okay. That's about it. Yeah, I debated about that. Originally, I was going to do kind of set pre-gens, but I wanted to actually have a chance to try the character creation. But it did mean that 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 I think I made it more complicated than it needed to be. Well, actually, I like it. I like it a lot as far as giving choices to the players. Um, and I think it's only fair because all the burden should be on you. Um, I've run Cypher System in the past and just handed out the little one sentence. I'm a, you know, adjective verb that nouns or whatever it is. Uh huh. And then characters chose from that. Okay, that's not a bad idea too. Rich thorns. Well, I have a, a personal thorn that we don't have a team descriptor or a team name. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a team name. Which Shit. nested underneath that is the thorn of my reading comprehension. Is poor. <laughs> um, I, you have a real challenge here with trying to present all of this data within our normal character keeper format. And I, I think you did a pretty good job, but it's weird having all of the little bits off of the tab that I'm looking at to... Yeah make the character i just don't know if there was necessarily a better one but it's a weird thorn of like okay let me go over here now let me go over here let me hop to another tab to roll dice it's like this is almost a thing where roll 20 if they had a good cypher system character sheet might be pretty good so no? the cypher system character sheet on roll 20 <laughs> while it is very well done is super complex okay and that's what just, kept me just throw it out there. yeah no you know what i might do is I might actually copy over your uh, the these stats and put them on the same tab as your powers. I'd still leave the the, the, the character sheet tab, but that way when you flip oh, over and link it with equal signs, so that if one changes, you know, you make a change on the main character tab, and it'll reflect on that. Would be really super useful. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll I'll do that this week because I think that'd be a useful functionality. Um, I'm actually I'm glad to have tried this because. Uh, when I go to do predation, you actually have both a character and a dinosaur that you control. Oh my gosh, you get to control a dinosaur. That's so, funny. so yeah, so that's going to be the more, more more challenging one. Uh, Michael Thorns. Uh, my, I guess my biggest thorn uh, was in the character creation process. I don't like just. I, I prefer not to just come up with abilities. Uh, um, on the fly, I, I it was hard for me to come up with the, uh, what okay. kind of superpowers I'd want. I did find online a list, a comprehensive list of uh, of cipher foci, and that helped a lot because then I just read down the list and until something caught my eye. And then when I saw consorts of the dead, um, when I that's when I knew what kind of I knew I wanted to do kind of a Reagan youth character because um, I know a common complaint about like stories about the sixties is that sometimes stories tend to lean heavy on the fact that everyone's a hippie when in fact there are a lot of nor you know normal you know conventional normal people who were you know the bulk of uh, a, a huge part of that generation as well and i wanted to like cover that um and then uh when i saw when i saw the powerless i saw consorts of the dead that that's when i started thinking about the whole satanic panic eight, uh, 80s thing and starting using that as a jumping board for my character but uh, i think um having a link to a comprehensive list uh, not just the four that were new to uh to yeah. uh, this game but that that helped a lot uh so that would be that'll, i think that was my biggest uh stumbling block in coming up with the character yeah i i think if i would do this again i would definitely present uh, a set of of clear like not too big lists to make those picks from to to pull that together yeah i think it's a good idea because the list i found was Went too far in the other way because included all the full site from all the safer games, including yeah. a lot that went real between my interests. Uh, Sherry, uh, for me, it was the annoyance of having to use this tablet, which means I can't flip between tabs very easily, which then meant 
a thing that turned out to be good, which is I have everything printed out, which makes this all amazingly much easier. Um, but then also I couldn't roll dice that you guys could see. So I could have been faking it. I wasn't. Um, also, the cat. The cat was a big jerk today and spent all of its time trying to nudge the tablet closed or essentially use the computer next to me, set off all the accessibility features so it would talk to it constantly. It was an awesome morning with that cat. So, uh, I'm going to say for myself, uh, still getting used to Cypher. Um, I think that there's a real challenge. I'm trying to get better at it. One of the things I, I, I'm very bad at is maintaining consistency in my terminology. So I was saying to rich effort, you know, at a pool, you know, when, when actually I meant this and, and stuff, and that was super confusing. And I need to be much more precise about that because you've already got so much that you guys have to worry about and, and, and pick up. And I, I didn't do you any service there. Um, uh, uh, and I made it, made it more confusing than it needed to be. So, so that's something I'm going to work on. For next time so that's my my thorn there um steven roses um i really like the way that the characters came together I, I you know coming into this i picked some things specifically like metalhead and comes from the future and that kind of stuff um that i had never really seen before but i didn't have a really good idea for the character until we went through this whole session i was like oh yeah of course he's part of the kiss army you know he needs a mask and of course and this, I, I felt like the same thing kind of happened with all the other characters. It was like, oh, all of this is kind of fitting together and all of our personas, I got, I have a really good grasp of it now. Yeah, very nice. I like that. Rich? Uh, for me, I I want to say, you know, I think Michael made a bold choice in going with uh, kind of the 80s and heavy Christian evangelism, like, I grew up in a notch in the Bible belt. And when you first mentioned, I'll be honest with you, I, I got a little nervous because there was definitely the whole satanic panic and the fall well and, and the, oh shoot, was it PTL club or something, something? Oh club? yeah, the 700 club. 700 club, yeah, wow. All that stuff was huge, huge in the 80s. Uh, but I, I also just tried to excise it from my mind. But I like that you kind of grasp onto it and... I'm really interested in seeing where you take that. I thought that was bold and, uh, and it did squick me out. So that's good. I was ready to X card at some point. Like, Oh really? Okay. I didn't need to, didn't need to at all. I just, it's, it's nice having that, knowing I have that. It lets me be a little braver as a player. Whereas I might just make jokes and like completely allied any serious content. Knowing I have an X card allows me to, to do that. And kiss army stuff's the best. <laughs> Magical Absolutely. Girl transformations, Sherry, so good, so good. Babylon Pie is the best. So I really like this group. It's good. Yeah. And good job, Lowell. This was I have played uh Numenera before, but I think that you did a really good job of succinctly saying, okay, do this next, do this next, rather than big overarching over explanation, lose me in the details kind of thing. Like we just jumped in and we got going. I think that's a really smart way to introduce people to things. Cool. Michael? Yeah, first of all, uh, Rich, I appreciate what you uh, said about my character choice. I was nervous about it, too, because um, I, 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 I didn't want to get into... Um, you know, the kind of character who is all about the protestation. Um, I was also nervous that uh, whether my character would just immediately start out in conflict with the other characters. Uh, I'm glad we started playing at a point where we'd already jilted the team and we didn't, so I didn't have to worry about that. Um, and I, I, I didn't, I, I wanted to, you know, I was concerned about treading carefully too with this subject matter. I didn't want to go either way where I was too in your face with, um, you know, the, with um, being a, a loud and voice of uh, uh Christian character, but I also didn't want to, uh, make myself or any NPCs like parents just be like, you know, Bible thumping, like, you know, like over the top bad guys. I was trying to, I was trying to find some middle ground. Um, and uh, that, that's, that was my, you know, I came, I didn't come from an evangelical background, but I did come from a, a traditional Catholic background. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I was all about those like crazy uh, apocalypse <laughs> um, preacher shows and, and on cable, but I was trying to uh, capture that part I was trying to focus that part of my uh, upbringing to this game without uh, 
make being a hassle to anyone else. So I, I will take care to uh, to continue doing that. Uh, so I can hope I can put people at ease uh, with that much. Um, for the rest of the game, I appreciate Lowell your um, your hand your handling all the different players. Everything went smoothly. Everyone got a good amount of screen time. I especially appreciate that you were. I could see you know the cues sometimes even nonverbal cues when I it looked like I was about to run off and separate myself from the rest of the group permanently. Uh, and I appreciated that. That was a good prompt for me to reconsider and get my character into the the, the real action of the scene. That was, uh, and trust that the other stuff will happen later. And, and to say, uh, 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 I just want to also say, I would have been cool if you did pursue him because we could have done that in parallel. But but it mm -hmm. was, it, I think it was more fun in the, the long run for you to be out there. Uh, Definitely. Uh, and he didn't railroad me into it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that that gentle bit of guidance. And and I would like to echo what Steven said. I felt like everyone was very cooperative during the character creation process, and we found ways to where our characters would continue, why our characters would continue to be together even after whatever initial crisis prompted us together in the first place. And one final thing um, concerning the team tag. I wonder if it's possible that the reason we don't have a team name is because we all want a different team name and we haven't been able to create yes. one yet. <laughs> we so, have uh, an acronym that is a conglomeration of yes. all the terrible <laughs> Right, we just, we just try to mash it all together. All our names <laughs> we together. are That's something ridiculous. Uh, KTLD. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, And one more thing. Babylon Pie is a really cool cold name. And yeah. I wonder how long it'll take before I call you Babylon 5 by accident. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sherry Roses? Muted. I was muted. That's not a rose. Um, so essentially, I was really skeptical about Numenera or Cypher system being able to do this, but it being teens in the 80s kind of uh, really works. Like it makes the system just, okay, this is how we resolve, right? <laughs> and then it's just all the fun of that. And I think this really worked just fine for that. Uh, I, I mean, this. Cypher system's fine, but the game and the characters were really good, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, there were lots of awesome callbacks. Everything seemed kind of true to, if not my actual experience, certainly my movie experience and my TV experience. So, um, yeah, uh, very good. I'm quite enjoying this thus far. Also, I would like to thank you for making up my character when all I gave you was a couple of lazy sentences and said, whatever's closest to this. So. I do appreciate that. Um, I want to say I, I, I really love the 80s elements that all of you brought in, uh, the stuff that felt very real, the the living in the arcade, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the Kiss Army. Uh, we had a local sort of regional uh, televangelist who had a, a television channel and stuff around in the area. So I'm very much with that, uh, uh, as well as a very, very strong Catholic community because we have Notre Dame here. Um, and it was always that weird tension between the two, and there was a lot of satanic panic in the area. Um, so uh, I like that. Um, and Sherry, of course, all of the style bits uh, for the 80s. So uh, I love that, the, the, especially your character costume bit. I love that that imagery. Um, so thank you guys very much. Uh, I will see you uh, uh, next week. Um, oh, uh, everybody should take, uh, because you did Discovery, you should all get three XP. You found out a bunch of stuff, so I'm being generous with that XP. And I get XP for not showing up because it's easier for you to to not have me along, right? So I get oh, absolutely, awesome. right? It's like a, it's it's a player intrusion. Sorry, it's like <laughs> a, all right, so I'm going to stop the broadcast. Thank you very much. <laughs>